I just want to start by saying that if you saw my short or my Instagram reel of me throwing away all of another tool brand stuff, it, it was not real. Uh, we kept that stuff, it was just, just for fun, okay? So <laughs> that being said, uh, we did, we're, we're slowly converting everything over to Festool as far as power tools, but we will keep a lot of our stuff that still works from other brands. So we'll get into that, but I finally did it. I finally switched my main tool, which is my miter saw over to Festool and that would be the Capex. We've got it set up out here. I'll show you here in a little bit, but I just wanted to quickly, quickly pass over what we're doing here because it is insane. So we're working for a master builder right now, Brent Hull, who you know, you know, I do the Patch for Craft podcast with. But you like style that doesn't stray from like, like, cause that, that yeah. all this stuff is like, well, it has this element, this element. Yeah. Right. That, or do you like more of a pure form? Well, it, it, I guess I like successful projects. I, I think I, <laughs> I, I could go check it out. I'll link it in the description. It's so much fun. We're touring historic houses, looking at details just like this. So this is crazy. This is a piece of poplar and embedded into it is a solid brass bar. <laughs> <laughs> and we're having to cut this on the sliding table saw. So this is one of the cuts that we had to make and it is pretty wild what we're doing here. The, the poplar will be painted, but there's one of the 45 turns right there. We're cutting it right here on the slider, making all of our bevels and just passing right here. Oh, real quick, uh, we are being, we're not being sued, but we've got a demand letter or some kind of like cease to exist or something from a tool company. One of these companies have decided to uh, pursue us to the full extent of the law if we do not stop making these this apparel. So uh, this is a funny apparel that we make. We have this one and then we have obviously, there's in those boxes this one as well that we have displayed on the wall. So I'm telling you right now, in these seven boxes, we have hoodies from small to 2XL, shirts from small to 2XL. We're getting rid of it because I don't want any legal stuff. I'm selling the last of what I have. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. It's down there, but this is the last of it. And then maybe I'll just start wearing these now. I don't know. I, you know, I feel like I came up with those logos on my own fair and square, but let's check this out. So over here we have set up for demonstration purposes, our brand new Festool Capex. So we opted for the stand that it comes with for mobility and the extension on the left and right sides here. So this is our new saw for the van. I don't have my ramp yet, but it's gonna be awesome wheeling this thing in and out. Uh, but I pulled it out right now and I've used this on one other job, actually where that Greek revival detail is going, that brass piece. And we set it up, we were cutting some sapili, which is an extremely hard wood. This thing did great. So I'm not gonna do a full review on it. I've only used it one time and I'm not really a review type guy, but I do wanna show you the precise cuts that this thing makes. And not only that, this is the only miter saw that I would feel comfortable like cutting in someone's house with. I trust this not to just throw dust everywhere. I know if you're following this channel for a while, you probably are thinking, I'm a complete trader. What's with the, you're wearing the Festool shirt. Now you got the miter saw. Look, I'm telling you, you got it. I used to hate them. I'm gonna be honest. I used to hate Festool. I thought they were pointless, I thought they were overpriced. You can get other tools that do the same thing until I got the Domino and I was like, wow, this is an amazing piece of engineering. I wonder what else they can do. I bought some other tools. I bought Tracksaw, the HKC 55, amazing piece of engineering. I wonder what else they can do. And it just, it's this rabbit trail that you go down. And I think 
at that point I was like, you know what, I need to give the miter saw another chance. Because if you've been following, you know, I reviewed this thing. I just gave like a first impression of it. What happened was we were working for a client. We were doing like two rooms of crown or something. He said, hey, I have it before you pull out your miter saw, I have one if you want to use it. It was this miter saw, the Capex. So I was like, sure, you know, I've, I've seen these things. You know, I'll give it a shot. And uh, I was just a hater. I just didn't like Festool. And I was like, you know, I really just don't like this pistol grip. Because after 10 years of using American style over the hand handle saws like this, you know, switching to a European style pistol grip is, is a change. And I think vice versa, if you had a European contractor who's used to this, you know, come use an American style saw, uh, they would, that takes some getting used to as well. So I'll update you on that if my, my uh, you know, initial viewpoint changes. But as you can see, I'm pretty much turning into a European contractor with the whole of Festal stuff, the van, and I'm pretty much just gonna move over there eventually so no I'm joking but let me give you my the highlights of this thing so one thing I like is the forward rails so you can get it you know tied up against the wall that's always good and it's a compact saw at that it is that 10 inch blade so the whole body and everything is more compact it's extremely lightweight which I love I love the adjustment of the bevel that easy you flip that and then you've got this knob here that you turn left and right and there's no weird you know bypasses or anything and you can hear that positive stop at zero and you just right there at zero clicks in you lock it down it has an actual hold down that i might actually use most of the ones that they come with the saw i usually just throw them away like literally the first day throw them away this one is pretty sweet it's a nice grip it's quick it's not like a little knob that you tighten and you got to get everything lined up you literally just drop this thing lock it down that thing is in there another piece of engineering that i like in this thing they do have a built-in or not built-in but they have the the angle finder right here in the back, you wrap this around uh, angles and then you can set it on your saw and get the correct angle. Uh, another cool thing about this setup that I really like is you don't have to even think about your table to extension like calibration. Like if, if these are connected right there, I mean that is that is it. You're, you're perfect on both sides. So you can take a long straight edge, like a level, and then you adjust these these legs here and you can raise them up and you know lower them to make it perfectly straight platform. It's got built-in stops right here. So this slides around. This is the only miter saw that I'm aware of that has an adjustable motor. So you can adjust the RPMs of this thing and it reminds me of the track saw. So you know, if you're cutting a certain type of material where you want that blade to go slower, or if you have a different count tooth blade in here and you want to slow it down, boom, it's just right here, right next to the laser. Um, I'll kind of run, th run through it real quick so you can hear the different RPMs. So that's all the way up right there, and I'll turn it down. And that's all the way down. But look how slow that blade is spinning. Turn it back up. And we're back to full throttle there. So, you know, obviously most other miter saws, you're always at full throttle. So it's just cool, you can adjust it, that's amazing. Another awesome thing for blade change, look how easy accessible that bolt is right there. Most miter saws, you gotta fight the blade guard and get it out of the way and everything like that. Um, so there, there's just a ton that I'm noticing about this and my, my initial impression of you know owning one of these. So um, yeah, anyways, let's... Let's make this cut right here. Look at the, just try to like focus right here because this is where dust would typically just be flying out.
the amount of dust that is collected in this thing. And I've hooked my other miter saws up to dust collection. And some are better than others, definitely. There's, there's the one that we all know that is the complete worst that's out there. But this is by far the best one that, that I've used. So let's go over here. Let's do ourselves a typical cut. A 45 return. Did you see what I just did? That is nuts. I oh look, this is crazy. I set this here and I, I grabbed right here. I'm not even joking. I don't know if you got that in the in the clip. I've been doing this so long with the I, I that was so weird. All right, here we go. Then we'll go back to zero. Then we'll get our, uh, let me turn my laser on actually. Is it on? Yeah. There we go. And that is a nice, precise cut right there. That's super clean. That, that is amazingly clean. Let me get another piece of lumber that actually can put off some dust. I'll leave my van door open for, I trust this thing not to throw a bunch of dust in there, but I'll get like a big chunk of, I think I have a Spanish cedar over here. So my cross cut capacity is around, it's like 12 and three quarter, 12 and seven eighths, but we're not gonna get all the way to there. I've got this 11 inch piece of Spanish cedar that can put off some dust. And if there was dust that I would want in my van, it would be Spanish cedar dust. <laughs> this stuff smells so good. It's my favorite smelling wood. All right, and you know what? Let's bring our, uh, our hold down over here and actually use a hold down for once in my life. That was a lot of dust actually. So that was more dust than I expected, but I think why, why it was doing that is because as I was making those kind of relief cuts, I, I don't know, what, I, mean, I think what we should do to get a real test is just cut through this whole thing. I shouldn't even do those relief cuts because while I was doing that, the, uh, I feel like this thing didn't have a chance to really grab it. If I was all the way down, it would be like going all back there. So let me scoot it over. I was, I think I kind of made more dust doing that. I was just trying to save myself from having to make multiple, move this thing over multiple times. But let's just go for it. Let's just go for the whole thing. And then we'll see how strong this thing is too. We're going all the way through. Yeah, that's much better. You can see it all getting collected. Like butter. It cut through that like butter. What is this? The six quarter Spanish cedar. Okay, we've got Spanish cedar. I think I have a piece of sapili, extremely hard wood. I don't think I have one this big. Let me see what I have and we'll see if we can make a cross cut all the way through or if this thing is gonna slow down or bind up or what. But that that's pretty impressive. So I couldn't find the piece of sapili I thought I had, but we do have this chunk of white oak. This is two and a quarter thick. Look at that quarter sawn grain right there, all that fleck. Um, this is really thick piece and similar hardness to sapili, so this will be a good test. Not as long as the Spanish cedar, but we'll clamp it down. I can't believe I'm using a hold down on a miter saw. This is crazy. I'm gonna try to go, I'm gonna try to go the whole thing again. So let's see, let's see what she's made of.
Wow, that's like butter. Look at that cut right there. And look how tight that green is in that white oak. This is some hard, <laughs> extremely hard wood and it just handled it. it just dealt with it. Dust, I actually didn't even pay attention to the dust on that because my mind was like, okay, I'm waiting for this saw to just bind up and grab and pinch. I'm waiting for it to get like weak and not handle it, but Wow, this, what this reminds me of is my, it's like my TS-75, like on rails. Like this thing is nuts. Cause whenever we made our doors, we made them with this. And this baby can handle some freaking wood. It never, it never let us down. <laughs> That's what it's like, like that is exactly like that. Oh, another thing. I don't even think I mentioned this. I decided to get the corded version. I thought about it when I was holding that cord. So everyone's going crazy for cordless miter saws and every company's making them, Festool's making them. But my experience has been, I like, I, I missed my corded miter saw. Like I, I've been using cordless for like the past couple of years and we're always around electricity. We're always, I don't know why, I thought they would perform better. I thought the technology would be better. Uh, I can't speak for every company. I haven't tried Festool's cordless, but what I've found is that the corded versions of, of miter saws at least are much better than the cordless. There it is, that's my initial first impression of being an owner of one of these things. And I'm excited to take it in the field and really get after it on some trim work. Um, another thing we'll be doing, we're about to start the fireplace mantle build. We're gonna be sinking the marble down into the floor this weekend. So I'll have this all set up in there. When we get to building that, we'll be making a bunch of detailed cuts, a bunch of miters. I'll be doing all kinds of stuff. I'm doing a traditional mantle with an over mantle and a broken pediment. But this will be the saw that I use and we're gonna see what it's really made of. But after this, this, this is mind blowing. Like that kind of just proved it to me that I love this thing. But uh, there'll be some nuanced things. We'll, we'll update you as we go. But Festool Capex finally switched over again on another tool to the dark side. I mean, lime green side. We'll see ya.